Most of the ones I've seen in town here seem to be very, you know, very nice people, and they're nice and clean, and didn't seem to be anything wrong with them. They're good sports and good athletes. People are not stupid, they're bright. And I think that too many people look down on them, and I can't see that. Well, I really don't care too much about it, really. My friend, they don't give me nothing. They don't understand that working for a living, putting a little aside for a rainy day, is a way of life. We're paying income tax to, to, to feed them, we're trying to get a house. We have to paint it ourselves. Then they get a, a house all painted, ready to move in. I don't think people know how many there are. And some of them don't realize, or they're not sure of, how many are to come. Once I had a little girl. Her slacks, they were brown. She danced on the cocoa floor. Her face, it was round. are Indians, 20 families who have been assisted to leave their reserves in northern Ontario to seek another and different life in the world outside. What expectations cause them to abandon their homes and journey the thousand miles to Elliott Lake? As you know, we have about 25,000 Indians in northern Ontario, and many of these are living in areas that are economically depressed, and uh, the idea was to bring them out to industry rather than attempting to bring industry to them. We brought 20 families down originally, which uh, included 40 adults and 44 children. 16 of these were of school age. Well, actually, Elliott Lake is unique in the fact that it uh, has houses available when you consider that there are 500 homes in Elliott Lake boarded up, or were, when we chose Elliott Lake. The fact, too, that it has the Centre for Continuing Education there, and there are facilities for uh, looking after the education of the children of the project, it seemed to be ideal. The criteria for the selection as one was an age range, some 20 to 30, no family should be beyond 30 years of age. The second was that they must all demonstrate a willingness to come. Third, they had to be physically fit. And fourth, an assessment had to be made to the effect that they would have made the adjustment. Why Elliot Lake was selected is because I had some knowledge in dealing with Indian students. The school, which was in operation, say, for three years, had quite a huge student population, particularly the Crees from the north. Well, uh, basically, uh, there is about $5,000 available for each family. Uh, the furniture took about uh, $1,500. Another $500 uh, was uh, granted to pay initially for the rent and the utilities and that sort of thing, uh, which will leave then some two or three thousand dollars for the down payment of a home after they've been moved from Elliott Lake. Are they paid salaries in any way? Well, it's a training allowance. It's paid by the Federal Department of Manpower, which uh, uh, can be as high as fifteen dollars a, a day. As long as they study or do they get it on a continuing basis? No, as long as they're on course, they get the they qualify for it. But uh, if they even miss a day, uh, then they don't get the training allowance. Even if they're sick? No, they can be sick and, and draw it, but if they miss for any other reason, they, they won't get paid the $15. I feel honestly, too, that we have... Uh, uh, that uh, there's not too much, uh, how would you say it, um, place for us to actively interfere in this project, or, shall we say, uh, make it more easy for the Indian to meet our people or to uh, integrate him by inviting him out here and there and everywhere. I don't think this is our part, and I think that the, uh, it may even jeopardize it. I think it, uh, that it's going to start, has to start with the children. I really do think so. And from, from childhood, if we're going to do anything with the problem. And uh, it'll take 25 years. I don't advocate to disbanding the reserves now, but it'll take 25 years, a whole generation. If we start now in 25 years, we may have made some progress. <laughs> Uh, 
I think we may have done the Indian the best turn that we've ever done them since uh, the white man came to the continent. Our queen is queen of England, her husband is Prince Bill, our country is Canada. <laughs> Alright, everybody, look at me. Just keep looking at me. So what, we're reading about what, ma'am, in our Bible story? David? Okay. So James R. Watson, personnel supervisor. Now, personnel supervisor. Here's the man you report to if you want to be employed. Huh? And don't buy your clothes too tight and show every bulge in your body. And don't buy them too big either. Try a dress on. Don't go to a dress rack and see something that you like because it's a pretty color. Ask the clerk if you may try it on. Very After you've written this address, let's say this is the end of the address here, you will skip another, the same distance again. See, it's a business letter, so everything's in order. Everything must be the same. It must be business. Make sure you have a good girdle and wear it faithfully. Not, also, it not only gives you a good figure and make your dress look smart, but it'll also take care of any back trouble or back aches that you might develop. Now, for brassieres, uh, also now here, try on your brassieres. Don't go and pick a brow off the counter in a store and hope that it will fit. Change the vowels in the words here mm -hmm. to a short O sound. You have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 words, and you change it to the short O sound. So that we can do a couple of them just to show you what we expect. This is fixed. So what will your word box? All right. And the dig is the one underneath fixed. And get one that has a good uplift in it. And it'll give you support. And then later on, you won't be running into trouble with breast abscesses. Possibly the right solution would be in, instead of using white teachers, instead use teachers with an Indian heritage too, who have already adapted to the community. And there as we're standing with one foot in each culture, and so that the Indian people in this case understand what, what's going on with them instead of just being moved by some people, by people that don't really understand. When you consider that these people are really rather primitive people who haven't had, uh, haven't been exposed to much education, they began at about a grade two or three level at the center. Uh, we hope to upgrade them to about a, a grade eight or 8.5 level, or indeed as, as much as they can take. Now, I wonder if you'd be kind enough to give me your wife's age and her name. Oh, dear. Well, I'll try. She's about 19 so. I see. And what's her first name, Patrick? That's my first name. What's her first name? Or your wife's uh, first name? Ruby. Ruby. Take this hand. Put your material under. Make sure your threads, your two threads from your needle and your bobbin are out behind. No, no, no. Turn your needle down in first. And how are you making out here in the center? Oh, not too bad. Amen. You mean, you mean how much I made for No, no, I mean, how, how, how are you making out? How do you like it here? And how, how, too bad. how do you like the school? How are you getting well, along? It's along. I'm coming along for all right. I see. Have you, have you thought anything about uh, what you, once you complete your basic education, what you'd like to be, what you'd like to train for at all? Have you given us any thought? Now, don't pull your material. That's it. Now, watch your fingers. Press with your foot. Watch your fingers. Okay. Uh, first, I can say I would like to be a mechanic after a while when I get enough learning. 
I say, well, how does your wife like it here? What does she think about the place? Right. Well, as far as I can sort of see this begin, she likes it maybe. Uh, she don't talk very much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I see. When I heard this program, you know, I, I didn't, uh, nobody did force me to come out of here. I volunteered for it. But that's, in a way, I realized how, how much it meant, how much this program meant. Not for me only, for everybody. I should say for all the Indians. The only group that we had in the project that were non-English speaking were the uh, folks from Pekanjikum. And uh, our intent here was to have them learn English as quickly as we could, or as quickly as they could. Those that are of school age are taught in English, but this does not prevent them from speaking at home. As a matter of fact, the family are very guarded about this. And at home, they actually speak Ojibwe. Well, I think that the the Indian still uh, thinks of his, uh, his people as a, as a tribal entity. He still uh, feels that the best life is still on the reserve. He's been encouraged to do that and to think that. And uh, I, I'm sure that we're not going to be able to change that way of thinking in a summer or a year. But uh, what he was talking about, uh, Indians over at the reserve, I think there's, there should be Indians at the reserve. That way, they more or less won't lose all their Indian cultures. I don't think we should lose it, never. I think it should go on forever, because it's uh, it's too important to to lose it. It's uh, if, if we're Indians, I don't think we should lose it. And the Indian uh, isn't this isn't the same as the white man. He he's more the type that does want to stay on the reserve. And I feel if the government uh, the government could bring some projects up there uh, to the north to keep them on the reserve because uh, they're always talking about the great future of the north. Well, if there is going to be a future, why ship these people out of the north? Why not bring the projects to the north? Uh, I'm not going to say that the welfare is, uh, has been spent unwisely, but a lot of that welfare could end up as jobs. I like to uh, live with my own people. If there's living down there and there's jobs, I think I would, I would stay. They want trying to make them like to be going on like a white people to live like white white people, but some of them they don't, they don't really want to get this on. They just want. They, they go to school all right, <coughs> but. But later on, when they're having first grade, they just go around, like, they're just walking around on the road, and they can't even want to look for jobs themselves. And uh, just like bums, you mean? Yeah, just like yeah. bums. These are our old people. We don't blame them, because we stick to the old-fashioned. We, we, this, is, we got, this is what we are, younger, younger generation, ourselves, like, we see. I call my, myself a young, young generation, but trying yeah. this is what we try to accomplish, more or less, to, uh, to, to make them realize what a future lay ahead. I think a uh, white man should try and understand uh, Indians. I think it's better to have uh, an Indian background. It's not a question of making white men out of Indians at all. Not at all. It's an attempt to help them to adjust to our way of life, to select from it what makes it easier for them to, to have a decent sort of an existence. They live in a sort of, uh, shall we say, informal, extended family system, non-time oriented setting. They enjoy a basic form of freedom and security, which is entirely different to the security that we can normally provide them for. For instance, uh, some of our women that are attached to relocation claim very often to be lonesome. And this, I think, would depend uh, entirely upon their makeup and the question of the non-availability of this security. There is a time on the hand, too much time. This is a transference or transplantation of a type of people 
to, as we say, a time-centered, hard, cold, industrial setting. An Indian isn't a white man. It's just the same as a white man isn't an Arab. I'm not saying uh, uh, an Indian is an Arab, but their psychology is just entirely different from ours. I think myself that we could uh, both learn together, but we could use a lot of his psychology as he could use probably some of ours. Uh, like, we're awful go-getters, you know, and it's a well-known fact that uh, 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 the Indian isn't. Uh, uh, maybe it's for the benefit, uh, for the better. Maybe that he just doesn't want our total society as we're trying to, sh I wouldn't say put it down his throat, but uh, he just doesn't want, uh, I would say, our total society. He would like to integrate. If they're going to integrate the Indian, they must do it uh, from our point of view, using our rules, because after all, the, those are the rules that will be used when they if they integrate. That's hard. I, I'm not really convinced uh, whether it's right or wrong. Something has to be done possibly to, to help the people become more self-destined rather than the old paternalistic idea where we, as white people, say that you have certain things to do, and we give them artificial regulations and so on. If integration means that we're going to try to help them to be put into a proper choice situation, then I think it's right. But you can't help but detract, probably, from some of the culture, the good parts of their culture that they already have. This is unfair. This is one of the big problems, I suppose, the big worries of everyone. How is this? How are the townspeople going to uh, take this? Do you think he's going to live? Are we? When he's all finished with this, he's going to go back on a reservation and still live for free. Bring them up to your level. Don't go down to their level. <laughs> what should he wear? You get nothing for about thirty years, my friend. Everything free. You think you're going to start working after that for your money? You think if up till now if they would have given me everything free, do you think I, I, now I would want to go back to work? Go to work? No, I'd still want to the rest for the rest, the free for the rest of my life, huh? Does that answer? That's my thoughts. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think so. Well, uh, I think that uh, if uh, it fails, I think it won't be on the part of the Indian people. I think, uh, if anything, it'll be uh, on our part that uh, we failed to. Uh, encourage them enough to to uh, launch out in faith. The number of the Indians have left, apparently. The rest aren't very happy. Do you, do you well, know anything I, about that? I wasn't aware of that, as a matter of fact. And uh, I can I can just imagine that you would expect that in a, an operation like this. I got a cute little girl named Kimberly Ann She's the cutest thing, this darling of mine You should see her the way she wrinkled her nose She'll give you a big smile when you take her toes That's why She's the cutest girl, this darling of mine, my little Kimberly Ann. And when Mama gave a bottle to a Kimberly Ann, and she says, "Time for bed, my little Kimberly Ann." She won't go to sleep until. Good night. So, Mama, kiss her, so we'll be all
for various reasons, of the original 20 families participating in this relocation program, 10 have returned to their reserves. Oh, in Canada, it's pretty rich, eh? Uh, As you may well see, uh, even in uh, in uh, reserves, they can hunt all they want. They were well, well, may as well say, well provided for. As uh, as those over at uh, Europe, some of those are uh, more or less uh, Negro children going hungry to bed, and all those uh, over at the uh, Asia people. We're better off, eh? Isn't that right? Three or four. John Meekus. And your wife? All right. And you, she's with us still, right? How many boys? Three. Three boys. How many girls? One. Three One. girls? Three old boys. John Meekus, $30. But what of those families who have remained at Elliott Lake. Are they able to overcome their loneliness and the complexities of their new style of life? Uh, they have had assistance, for instance, in uh, bringing them out initially. They have been given assistance and a substantial amount in their initial settlement. For instance, their houses were provided with uh, 
fridges and TVs and telephones and furnitures for this matter and all the amenities that is normally required of a person living in a society of this nature. They're asked now how many more families think that they would like to go home. No one speaks. But just as soon as either Mr. Wilson or any of the people that are there to interview them are gone, well, they come to us and they run around and, and uh, give us a hard time. No, I'm, I'm leaving out here. Why are you leaving? Because I don't, I don't really like it. Why, why, don't you, why don't you like it? It would mean to, a lot to our uh, our children uh, in future. You know, they they they, they would uh, 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 benefit from this. You know, and, uh, 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 but it's really up to us. I might go back yeah. someday, though. It's the only then. It's only then that we know how many more want to go, and they they never spoke up. I think probably. Yes, I think the conditions are just a little bit too good. Uh, I don't think that most people realize the extent to which the government and, uh, and the town went to make this a success. And the only reason why they left is because the initial selection was badly made. The selection was done initially by the Indian Affair. This could have been improved if at all, the agencies that were actually engaged in this undertaking could have pooled their resources. Again, it is somewhat fatuous for people to do the training of certain people when they had no hand in their initial selections. Um, I would say this, that right from the beginning, all, the, all three agencies should have been involved, Indian Affairs, Canada Manpower and the training center, which in our in this case was ourselves. Every every new man that starts with the Indian Affairs branch, he says it's just going to be different from now on. I'm going to have it come this way and that way. But each time, each time they fail. And if we had to do it all over again, we would never do it the way it began, which was a, a rather classroom situation and removing them from their homes. If the, the town could have been oriented to the fact that. Uh, Indian families were moving in and trying to live in houses right in the town, then they could have been prepared to make this a more successful program. There are two people, two groups of people that are doing a lot of learning here. Um, we're learning how we can help to make the choice situation available to the Indian, and he's learning how he has to cope with us. And another thing, too, I think that the white community really has to accept uh, the worth of the Indian as an individual and, and get rid of this stereotype, you know? Yes, I think so. You just relate to him as a person. I worked with the Indians for years, and I think uh, that uh, they did more for me than I did for them. Probably in the next 50 years when leisure is at a premium, we will have to turn to these people to learn from them. Uh, the chances are that we may be busy destroying the very thing that we are looking for later on.